Good day guys. So today's video is going to be a bit different from the usual stuff. We're going to leave the jolly shores of rainy England, pack up our favourite tea bags, and we're setting off somewhere warmer. I'm taking you to Brazil. In this case we're off to San Paulo, Brazil's biggest city, to take a look at the work done by Ingessa. In this video we're going to focus on the Cascavel, an excellent armoured car that can still be found in many forces today and was part of a brilliant series of vehicles that have outlived their parent company. So who were Ingessa? Ingessa itself is an acronym and was a firm located in São Paulo, formed by a group of engineers led by José Ribeiro in 1958. Originally the firm was created with the aim to manufacture equipment for oil prospecting and refining equipment for use by Petrobras. Brazil's primary petroleum producer. Yet the company faced an obstruction. How to move their equipment on the trucks and vehicles they had to the designations they needed to go along poor quality roads which became notoriously hard to traverse in the wet seasons. The solution was to make better vehicles. The Ingessa engineers devised the boomerang transmission marketed under the Total Traction which could be retrofitted to a wide variety of vehicles and allowed 4x4 and 6x6 vehicles to be able to traverse the terrain they could not normally have conventionally crossed. Essentially it allowed the rear four wheels to have independent powered movement, allowing the vehicle to cover rough terrain and was retrofitted to cars, trucks and even buses. This caught the eye of the military in 1970 who were looking to modernise their fleets and were impressed with this new traction system by Ingessa and contracted them to design and build two new vehicles on a 6x6 system, with one for reconnaissance and another for troop transport and support roles. More of the Ingessa story will appear in future videos, but in this one we're going to look at these reconnaissance vehicle designs, which would go on to become the EE9 Cascavel, arguably their most successful product and an extremely capable little machine. The Cascavel or Portuguese for rattlesnake, is one of the family of vehicles, each with snake names, and was intended to replace Brazil's ageing fleet of M8 Greyhounds, which it acquired post-war, along with M3s and some M4 Shermans. The vehicles were to be a 6x6 configuration, use the Ingessa Total Traction Rear Suspension, as well as their new dual laminate high hardness steel for protection. The first concept vehicles were not built by Ingessa, but by Brazil's PQRM2 R&D team, an FVRDE equivalent if you will, which itself had been created on December the 17th 1957. The first vehicles produced were the VBB1, developed between 1967 and 1970, which was based on the Greyhound but reconfigured for a 4x4 version. The hull still retained the dual driver's windows and the turret was carried over from the M8. The VBB-1 was used to test ideas and theories, however it was not put into production and remained more of an experimental idea, but gave the engineers the skills and desire to progress the idea further. The next vehicle was the VBR-2, a forerunner of the EE-9. The initial models were in a sense a heavily reworked Greyhound again, and the similarity is quite remarkable. The hulls remained similar with small changes to the layout, notably a single driver's position centre-left. However, the rear four wheels do not yet have the boomerang system added, with the obvious gap between the rear wheels indicating this. This was quickly followed by the CRR in 1970, which is nearly identical but does mount in Jester's rear suspension system, identifiable by the distinct circular central axle cover and it's somewhere between these two concept vehicles from the PQRM2 team that Ingessa becomes involved with the project, although the exact dates are a little uncertain. Ingessa worked on their own design based on these previous vehicles, which would become the EE9 Cascavel. These early Mark I Cascavels kept the M8 turret, which was later modified with an extended rear bustle. These were quickly followed by the Mark II model, with a much more useful weapon, and found almost immediate export success abroad. Portugal had initially shown their first desire to import Cascavels. However, Ingessa's first real exports came in the form of a large order from Libya for 500 vehicles. 
400 of which were delivered between 1975 and 1978, being an even mix of Mark IIs and some later Mark III's. Engessa had now entered the arms market, playing a high-stakes game, which gave them a confidence boost, perhaps too much of one. This was quickly followed up by an order from Chile, who ordered a further for 83 vehicles, and a further order from Iraq for 200 vehicles between 1979 and 1980. For a newly-fledged defence firm, this was nothing short of miraculous, and would cement Ingess as a real-time player. However, the meteoric rise would later come at a heavy cost. Ingessa continued to produce vehicles. Caskvelds were selling well, and Bolivia began to buy their vehicles as well, followed by a large order from Colombia in the 80s, and Cyprus with a smaller number in 1981. Over the years, many marks and submarks have been made, from homegrown versions to field modifications by various nations, so we'll have a look at these. There are far too many submarks or modifications to list extensively, and we'll focus on the main ones and touch on some of the lesser known ones, but covering nearly every version would be impossible. We'll also be going by the models and modules as listed in the Ingessa brochures and documents only. So we'll start with the Mark I. These were the first production batch and used by Brazil only. This version featured the M8 and modified M8 Greyhound turret, armed with a 37mm M6 gun. Two engine choices were stated in the brochure. The first was a Perkins type 6367 six cylinder inline diesel engine at 142 horsepower, while the other option listed was the Chrysler. 318 HD 8 cylinder V low octane petrol at 196 brake horsepower. Although the firm stated that other options were possible for customers, including Ford and General Motors engines if required. The Mark I is visually similar to the M8 Greyhound, with a shorter snout, raised headlights on the upper glassie, and the tyres and wheels were used from the M8. These Mark I's were not exported and remained in service for some years, but are now generally found in museums and private collections. The next vehicle was the Mark II, primarily an export version. This came in a few flavours. The gun had been upgraded to the 90mm French gun, firing high explosive, heat and hesh. The choice to upgun the vehicle came following Portugal's struggle in the Ultramar War. <laughs> no, not that one rather the colonial war between Portugal and several of its colonies in Africa, many of whom gained independence. They had shown the interest in the Cascavel very early on, but not with a 37mm gun, being more used to the larger French guns on their armoured cars. The feedback from this war was the suggestion to upgun the vehicle with a far more useful French 90mm gun. Early in Gessel artwork shows the hull with a new, flatter curved turret and the French 90 gun, and initially Engessa only wanted the gun itself. However, France refused to sell the gun without the H90 turret, as found on things like their AML 90. With Engessa not in the mood for squabbling with the obtuse French, they agreed, and the Mark II was thus fitted with a French turret and a D921 F1 90mm L33 gun. This wasn't a bad choice. It's a very potent gun, able to perforate around 250mm at 2km. They packed enough firepower to deal with most tanks and other similar classes of vehicles they were likely to engage. The Cascavels had gun stabilisation and a fire control system to enable them to fire somewhat reliably on the move. Each Mark II came with 25 rounds, however additional stowage for a further 21 rounds was an optional extra. Power for the Mark II was listed as the Mercedes-Benz OM352 six-cylinder inline diesel engine from the Unimog series, delivering 174 brake horsepower, and had the distinct rear transmission of the Cascavel family. The top road speed for the Cascavels was stated in the manuals as 100 km an hour. Aesthetically, there are changes. The upper hull retains the shorter glassy plate, and keeps the dual headlights mounted on the top side. However, the driver now has three periscopes to his front. The turret has a square, clean, mantless front. To the gun side, a coaxial 7.62mm gun can be found with a clean air cooling jacket, and usually a pair of smoke pots are located on either side of the turret rear. The arm of the Mark II is considerably better though, being fitted with a new Ingessa design dual layer varied ductility type plate. 
This was done by blending steels of various carbon mixtures to provide a very hard outer skin and a soft inner skin that weighed no more than the regular steel, yet offered more protection than conventional steel plate. While this concept is not itself overly new, Engesser were the first to make the method in such a way that the welding of the metal became easy and applicable. The Mark IIs were sold to Libya and Chile and Bolivia and many are still in service today. The next big upgrade was the Mark III and it's possibly the most common Cascavel seen today. This version had more of a modern look about it. The upper hull is marginally longer and more sloped and the headlights are now built into the lower plate with a clean upper plate. The turret of the Mark III is similar to the Mark II with a more refined mantlet in place and a pair of three smoke launchers instead of two. The Commander now has an angled cupola on the left top of the vehicle and it's not uncommon to see the vehicles with a laser rangefinder fitted with a distinct box towards the rear of the gun. The engine itself has changed again and the most common fitted is now a Detroit Diesel 6V53N water-cooled diesel delivering 212 brake horsepower, although the top speed remains the same at 100 km per hour. The biggest change is the gun. The early Mark III's had the Belgian-made Cockerell 90mm gun with its distinctive triple brake. This was later license built by Ingessa as the EC90 gun. The differences are quite minimal and hard to tell at a glance. The weapon fired a similar range of ammunition to the older 90mm, including heat and hesh, although a beehive round and later an AP FSDS round with around 300mm of perforation was designed for Iraq. Although to fire these rounds, which remained expensive prototypes, the guns needed to be changed as the triple baffle would have interfered with it far too much, and a simple pepper pot muzzle brake was designed, but never exported. Iraq was the biggest purchase of the Mark III Cascavel, and it's worth noting not only did they buy large fleets of vehicles, but over 400,000 rounds of ammunition, as well as spares and supplies, which is a considerable export deal for any firm. The Cascavel would continue to see service, and there are a few notable factory submarks tried and tested. These include the development of the EE-25 anti-infantry turret, armed with a 25mm Ehrlichen KVA cannon, firing APDS and high-explosive incendiary rounds. This again was marketed for Iraq, but also open for other prospective clients, although only a few prototypes were made. Another much rarer version was a dedicated surface-to-air missile platform, which had a pair of missiles on top, although it's not believed to have found any buyers. Several modernization programs have been carried out on Cascavels. The first by Equitron, in conjunction with the Brazilian Army, included a pair of more spike missiles on either side, a new exhaust system, and a lower thermal profile, digital driving controls, and a new laser rangefinder and fire control system to bring the Cascavel up to date as a potential upgrade package for other users. More recently, Cascavels have undergone a modernization by Ares Aerospace a subdivision of the Israeli Elbert system, and was first seen in the 2019 International Defence Fair. The upgrade included a modified Torq 30 turret with a Rhine Metal MK30-2 30mm cannon, firing APFSDS rounds able to engage land and air targets. The turret is fitted with a new fire control system and digital infrastructure to allow it to fight in all weathers day and night, and a new rear section with a distinct raised arse end. So to conclude with the Cascavels, they proved very successful and lucrative. Ingesser was working on several other vehicles, which will be covered in subsequent videos later on. In total, 28 countries used or still use the Cascavel. Some bought and some were captured from others. Overall, it's a great design and very well liked by its operators. It was, compared to some Western options, cheap, reliable, and had the right tools for the job. And more importantly, it just worked, which is everything you want in a vehicle. Indeed, many Cascavels are still running today, decades later, and have recently been seen fighting in Syria. However, the Engessa story is not such a happy tale. With their newfound success from the selling of several vehicles and the development of new lines of vehicles, the company began to expand quicker than it could afford, and had soon engulfed or operated 13 firms in its portfolio, covering everything from aerospace to media while money given for products was instead invested into new areas of R&D on projects that were not required or needed, and Ingesta began to find itself creeping into debt, debts it could not recover from. However, that story will be covered as we progress further down the Ingesta line and look at some of their other vehicles. Well guys, that's all we have time for today on the Cascavel. We'll take a look at other vehicles soon, if this video does well. 
I'd like to give a special mention to Darren Hayes, who's helped with the work into the early ingester products and really helped going through hours of notes and comments. Big thanks. If you did like this video or you want to see more South American vehicles, let me know below. And until next time, ciao.